And welcome back to the ROI channel, the channel obsessed with the art and science of return on investment. Uh, thank you for everyone who's following the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, I would love it if you could like and subscribe so that you're kept up to date with all the different analyses and macro updates that I will be doing. Uh, thank you to those who are copying the portfolio on eToro and doing my best to build out a really good machine uh, of great diversified assets, which will perform over time, we're looking at a targeted uh, compounded annual growth rate of 20% or more. And so far, uh, so good. And look forward to uh, continuing the journey. Today, we're talking about Microsoft, one of the best businesses in the world. And as it says there in the presentation, it's really a business that the world can't do without. And if you can find a business like that and you, you know how good it is, it's a high quality business with continued growth prospects low fixed costs and high variable margins and all that sort of thing. Uh, as long as we can get it at a right, at the right price and the decisions don't come much more straightforward than that when it comes to investing. So we're going to jump right in there today. And as long as we can get the slides working, there we go. Investment formula, quick recap, what I look for when uh, looking to fill out a, an individual position in the fund or any investment for, for that matter for the long term. We want strong balance sheet, okay, so low debt, margin of safety, be that cash at bank or the current price trading a long way below where we believe the intrinsic value to be. In terms of the, the quality of the business and the operation side of things, we want to see sales growth or have a strong reason to believe that they'll be growing in the future. Uh, strong margins, all good and well to grow top line revenue, but if none of it's dropping through to the bottom line as profit, then we tend to pass on those. Free cash flow growth. That's the, the biggest aspect for me in terms of what I weight uh, the valuations towards. We want to look at, okay, how much of the business earnings is you, as free cash, which can be used to either grow the business uh, further in R&D or acquisition, so buying out other related businesses for synergy growth uh, and cost savings, or they want to distribute it back to dividends, or they simply want to buy out or repurchase the shares, okay, which is another, uh, another thing that we look for. Increasing our ownership as equity holders of the business over time. So some quick facts about Microsoft. Today, what I've done is I've tried to condense everything into the one uh, the one window so we can simply just look at the slides uh, for time and clarity's sake rather than me jumping between windows. So here we have the revenue, the EBITDA expected, um, or this is announced rather, and the historic growth rates. Okay, so double digit compounded annual growth rate. When you think about a business that's been around for as long as Microsoft, um, that's, that's great. However, what's even better is we would expect that to increase moving forwards. If you think about when Microsoft was started, uh, quite frankly, the, the more technology evolves, the more software you, you need. So the more computers and internet of things, the greater the ability for software and, and services like like Microsoft. Microsoft, a very, very interesting business. It's a social media company um, by its acquisition of LinkedIn, and it's also um, obviously a software company. So a lot to like about it. Balance sheet's got negative net debt, which means it's got more cash on its balance sheet than its outstanding liabilities. So it's got lots of cash, debt isn't an issue. 7.5 billion uh, shares outstanding, and it's repurchasing shares uh, at a rapidly growing rate. It's got a long history of uh, creating free cash flow, using some of that cash flow to buy out other businesses for future growth and using some of that cash flow to, to repurchase shares. So we would expect our ownership of the shares to grow over time. And that's been reflect, reflected in the share price having really increased um, massively over the last 10 years. Return on capital, 31%, it's so a very, very strong uh, management, good use of capital. Market cap, 2.2 trillion and current share price as it stands today, 289 and change. So rather than flip and read through the, the quarterly report as it is, I've just taken some excerpts, what I believe are the most important parts of the, the quarterly report and put it in here. So revenue increased 20%, 41.7 billion, massive numbers we're talking there. Operating income increased even more as a percentage, which means that not only are they growing their top line sales, but they're also growing their margin. So they're selling more stuff and they're getting to keep more of those sales as profit, which is exactly what we want as equity holders. Net income, 
and earnings per share using generally accepted accounted principles. You can see there 44%, 38% uh, increases respectively, which is massive, uh, massive gains. A, a note on Microsoft, if you think about the types of, uh, of earnings, it's not just how much they earn and how they're growing those earnings, but it's the quality of those earnings. Think about Microsoft, a lot of it is subscription based. Okay. So they're selling uh, Microsoft Teams, so all the application, Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Office, so on and so forth. OneDrive I'm using right now, uh, spreadsheets, etc. Et Those are the, the types of businesses that are really, really good to own because they're, they're what we call sticky. So once you acquire a customer and it's on a subscription base, the, the customers are going to continue to use those uh, software applications unless they find something that's really so much better. And Microsoft is is probably one of the best to use and it's very reasonably priced. So Microsoft, once they acquire these customers, they're not going anywhere anytime soon, which is really, really exciting. They'll be able to, to grow their, their revenue base over time. Similar thing with LinkedIn, the way that they are now, um, when they acquired LinkedIn to be able to have advertising platform, it's kind of like merging, um, say zero, which is a, a popular software company and Facebook. So it's a, it's a social network and it's a, a software company and it's many other things and it's an advertising company and all these things roll into one. So uh, there's also why you'll see that um, earnings increase such a, a big jump that will include 620 million in a, a tax benefit. Okay. So that will uh, boost the earnings. And again, as I talk about quite a bit on the channel, earnings are not always the best thing to look at uh, because they, they take into account depreciation, amortization and, and various tax liabilities that will make them fluctuate more year on year. So we, we look more for enterprise value to EBITDA and free cash flow as more solid and reliable metrics. So short-term projections, let's look forward to 2023. Companies already announced their 2021 earnings. Uh, we've gone through looking at analyst estimates for 2023. We've got free cash flow, EBITDA, and earnings estimates there. If you follow my cursor, I've applied conservative multiples for each, okay? Think about it, Microsoft is a, a software company. So you're always going to be expecting higher margins. It's a, it's a high margin, high quality business. And with that comes higher multiple. So we get this, uh, this holy trinity of increasing the earnings, increasing the cash flow, the EBITDA, you're increasing the ownership of the business because they're buying back the shares with some of those cash flows. And then not only that, but people are actually willing to pay more for those earnings because it's such a, a high quality, low overhead business. So uh, we've got on average, if we tally those up, that's around about a 14% upside looking out into 2023. Uh, so it's not a it's not a, a rocket ship or a, a going to the moon, but it's a high quality company that uh, I think could, with those conservative estimates, do very, very well over time. It will easily beat the market, in my opinion, over the long term. And so all we're waiting to, all we're waiting on now is for something to happen for the market to want to sell it off. And then we'll really be backing up the truck. And that's where you can do very, very well on your blue chip companies such as Microsoft. So looking forwards over a longer time frame, which is what we want to do if we're going to hold a business um, over the longer term. If I buy the shares today at the price of $289, this is the free cash flow. So I've just taken free cash flow estimates and projected them with a conservative growth rate moving forwards to 10 years. And as you can see here, if we exit in 10 years, that's what we expect the share price to be given the, an expected multiple and expected growth rate. If we look at the cost of capital for the company, it's a financing rate up here. And all I've said is, well, what if we um, take those cash flows and, and the opportunity cost would be to reinvest them at the same cost of capital? What would that be as an IRR? And you're looking at just under 17%. Okay, so you think about that as a, a theoretical annualized return. Uh, or an interest rate, if you get a, a, a bank account with say 10% interest rate that's compounding over time, we won't see them again in our lifetime probably. And that that's a, a representation of what the earnings or the cash flows of this uh, company is expected to do as a, a, 
as an internal return to me as the equity holder. So the questions we ask is, can I get that in a bank account? No way. Will that beat the market? I think that will beat the market. And I think that, you know, if you look at long-term average for, for the S&P 500, which is our benchmark, 7 to 8% nominal return is, uh, is pretty good for the market as a whole. So we're, we're well ahead of that there, almost double. So we're pretty confident with this uh, being a, a good business to hold for the longer term. I actually think that Microsoft can do better than that, uh, given the interconnectedness of of our, our, our lives now and with more people working from home and technology being such an important part of that, uh, Microsoft is, is really in the driver's seat to, to capitalize. So those earnings, uh, those cash flows there have been a very conservative projection. And I think that we can even outperform. Okay. So rather than go through each, each of the scenarios in different tabs, I've taken a screenshot of a culmination of earnings projections and calculations with the free cash flow, the earnings per share and enterprise value to EBITDA. Okay. What I've done is I've put the valuations. If you follow my cursor there for free cash flow and the earnings and then come up with an average. So in this particular tab, we've got the EBITDA. Okay. In the billions, these are the growth projections that I have used. That has been based uh, historically, and I've given each a little bit of a haircut as I tend to do to be conservative. We're discounting that at our required rate. Okay, so that should provide us with a margin of safety already because we're using such a, a high discount rate. If you think back to the, the previous slide, the cost of capital for the company is about 6%. So we're, we're, we're discounting way above that. We're just saying, all right, let's keep it simple. We want 20%. Uh, let's discount all the cash flows and, and earnings that we expect at that rate. And then that'll give us a price at which or below we we will want to buy the shares in order to achieve that rate of return over time okay uh so we read through here we've got a base case our bull case and our bear case we do that with the free cash flow and the earnings as well i've just plugged them straight in here and we take the average of each so Probability weighting, this is where the, the art comes in as well as the science of investing. I think the most probable case is the base case, okay? What has Microsoft done in the past? What's it likely to do in the future? And as you can see here, we've given most of the weight uh, to that scenario. A little bit, 10% uh, likelihood for the, the upside, the bull case, 10% downside for the bear case, which is probably overly bearish. And if you look at that expected EBITDA, an enterprise value to EBITDA on a per share basis. And then we say, okay, let's say the intrinsic value using the EBITDA method, the free cash flow method, and the earnings method, average that out. We're looking 296 and change. The current share price is under that at 289. So we think that that's a, a reasonably confident buy. And using the old Buffett and Munger uh, margin of safety, if the shares were to drop at you know, two thirds or less of what we think their intrinsic value is, that's when we start backing up the truck and, and we load up uh, good and hard. However, uh, when those guys do their, their analyses, generally they just use a 10% discount rate. Okay, so we've already, uh, we've used double that. So we've already got a margin of safety in this number here. So we should feel fairly confident um, but that's just another interesting thing to add in there. And when you get a scenario where all of those things really line up. Like for example, Fortuna Silver Mines, even at our, our most conservative estimate of intrinsic value is well below or well above, excuse me, where the shares are currently trading, then that's a, a sign to be aggressive. So uh, as you can probably tell by now, the verdict is that I'm buying it. I've bought some for the fund already. A quick recap of what we look for. It's got low debt. It's got negative net debt. In fact, it's got massive margin of safety, both on the balance sheet and in terms of where we think the intrinsic value is. Sales growth is amazing. Uh, strong margins, free cash flow growth, and they've got a history of share buybacks. So that ticks all the boxes for us. And I'm buying, I've put about four and a half percent of assets under management in the eToro fund into Microsoft. 
Okay. Uh, having mentioned eToro, if you want to check out the portfolio and consider copying it, um, I'd highly encourage uh, anyone interested to check it out. There's the link there. It'll be in the description, of course. Uh, follow me on Twitter and I'll continue to put out uh, some of my thoughts on Twitter. Instagram is the same. And if you haven't liked and subscribed the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. Uh, thanks very much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in the future with more of these analyses. Hopefully you're getting some value out of them. As always, of course, common sense uh, disclaimer. This isn't financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Make sure you, if you are interested in either copying the portfolio or um, investing, make sure you do your own due diligence. And uh, that is that. So thanks for watching and wish you a wonderful day. We'll see each other again soon.